Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Drug Knitter Podcast. Oh, I didn't shave my armpits. I am your host, Sophia, and I never shave my armpits. I am the worst. Anyway, welcome to the podcast. Grab yourself a drink. I got myself my coffee on, I put it on my heated saucer, which is just a candle warmer. That was three bucks. Got my black cat mug, but I think it's for lefties. So let me see if I can spin it around. Ta-da! I got it for my cat, um, Davos, who's black and white. But true story, nobody wanted to adopt him because he wasn't lighter colored. Isn't that so weird that we do that with animals? I don't know. That's so weird. Anyway, he's an awesome cat. We call him my creepy old man because he literally likes to just stare at us. Poppy, no squeaky toys during the podcast. No squeaky toys during the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he likes to just stare at us like this. He is the only cat I've ever had that gives us full-on eye contact and will not break it. Puppy, you're knocking down the tripod. Actually, I don't have a tripod. I actually have my space heater. Um, it's it, it's the one that looks like a stove. And then I have my trash can, my waste basket on top of that. And on top of that, I have a little stand for my phone which is recording right now. This is a really, hi, my name is Sophia Fatali and I run a really low budget podcast. That's why we have a Patreon program, yay! And I love all my new patrons. So how this is gonna work is that at the end of the video, I'm gonna do like really, really fun shout outs and you will get your other goodies through, through Patreon, through your emails. So keep a look. Hey, this is Sophia from the future. So I cannot put my patron shout outs in yet until um, Patreon accepts them through the pay period or what have you. I have a full update about this on my Patreon webpage. So check that out. Back to the podcast. Just want to talk about knitting on a budget. So those who know, I went the grad school route, which means I was broke. Broker than broke. What is puppy eating? Puppy eating a piece of paper. Broke. I was literally broke, broke, broke. But that's when I first started knitting for real. That's when I knitted my owl's cardigan. I mean, sweater. I, I never knit the cardigan that I want to. And I knitted my Olin sweater. And I knit. I knitted all these things. But guess what? A lot of them were knit using budget yarns. Well, were knit well under $100. Like, well under. Like, we're in the $10 range for a few of them. Seriously. Um, my owl sweater I knitted for $30, which is a steal knowing that it's it's 50% uh, superwash merino, I want to say. And it's so squishy and soft. But, but we're going to get into that and why it's so important to me to stay on my budget when it comes to knitting. So... When I first started knitting, I have my book out. This is my lovely planner that I showed you in my favorite books list because without this planner, I wouldn't know what day it is. I wouldn't know what time of the week. I, I wouldn't know a, a thing about my life. So <laughs> I know it's kind of tragic. But anyway, um, I'm reading right here what I wrote and I just... I'm blind. Well... So much for that. Anyway, <laughs> I could squint for hours and try to read that thing and nope, I'm just making a mess in my office, Lord. Like, you know how I throw things? Um, there are some things I cannot find because I threw them into the great abyss of what is my little craft cart, which I have to sh publicly shame my show, myself and tell you about my craft cart one day. I have to show you a picture of it. It is tragic. Like this most of my office is really, really organized and neat, and I love it. And then I have this eyesore in the corner of my office, and it honestly is an eyesore, and that's where I throw everything when I'm filming on top of it already being an eyesore. So there are things in there that I have to organize. So oh, I am purposely wearing this top. This is called, but I believe it's Highway 29. Okay, I'm wearing it with a bralette because, I don't know, I just wanted to be a little fancy today. Um, and this is a halter top. I'm gonna have to put the designer. Puppy is eating another piece of paper. Why are you eating paper? Where are you getting? I just vacuumed. I just vacuumed. <laughs> I don't know where they find like these things. I wish it was. She actually, this design inspired me to make the Aria top, 
which it looks absolutely nothing like the Aria top at all. I was just inspired by a bottom up uh, top design. And then I think I spent like $12 to make this. And it's a cotton mix. I believe it's cotton synthetic mix. But it was very inexpensive, very, very cheap knit. A lot of times you have cotton, um, it's too thick, it's too bulky, um, it looks like it's supposed to be a dishcloth. There are so many options nowadays where we can get really, really nice quality, affordable yarns. Um, like, I just can't believe this is a cotton yarn that I picked up from a local craft store. Like, this is the type of yarn that you get, like, from Knit Picks, like... Um, I think they have like Knit Picks Comfy, which is a cotton mix or something like that. And um, that's inexpensive, but this is another level of inexpensive. Sorry, I got whew, my eyelash. Hold on. <music> Tread lightly. I have a trash can and everything is... Look at my setup. <laughs> Come here. I like it. They... They want to see, th the people want to see you. I don't know if I'm going to be able to tread lightly through here with this ding dong bouncing all over the place. Come here puppy, puppy. <laughs> Come here. Good girl. Okay. Oh, oh, ow. She's like, Come here. Just say hi really fast and just don't break my setup. Hi people. Okay, now take her. <laughs> Come on pup. Oh no, no. <laughs> Close the door. Oh. Thank you. He has came and gone. So anyway, we're going to talk about affordable yarns. Let's get started. So first things first, I wanna talk about one yarn that has been in my house growing up forever and ever and ever, and that is the unspeakably cheap and affordable Red Heart Super Saver yarn um, that usually comes like this. I actually have a whole basket of it right here because I bought a whole bunch of this stuff to make a big afghan made out of miltered squares. Is that how you say it? Miltered? Miltred? Miltered? Metered? Mitered squares, Sophia. Mitered squares. I made, I made like three of these last night. It took me all night to make like three of them because I was cooking dinner and what have you as I was doing it. But... I'm gonna make a really colorful, hippy dippy afghan using Milter Square. It is pronounced mitered, mitered, mitered. But what I'm, the thing is, like all this yarn cost me about 20 bucks, and I got about, what, 10 skeins of yarn here just to make an afghan. Now, this is acrylic, and there's a lot of, the reason why I'm starting with this is that there's a lot of, uh, some people don't like acrylic just because it is a fire hazard. It is a uh, synthetic fiber. So what that means is that it's not like wool. It's not um, naturally a little fiber, I mean, fire retardant. It will catch on fire and it will melt because it's a plastic. Um, and so I, when I knit my baby stuff, like knit things for babies. I tend not to knit it out of acrylic, even though most of the stuff you get in the store, sweaters, what have you, car seat padding, what have you, is actually made out of synthetic fibers that are like acrylic, things like that, that just have a fire retardant over them a lot of the times. So don't quote me on all that, but I think that's what I learned in school. Um, so when Despite that, with babies, I tend to just use bamboo and cotton and things like that. I'll have a few of those blends up here. So you can see I put all of my affordable yarns I'm going to talk about up here. Um, but I still use Super Saver Red Heart. I do. I do. I grew up on it. I mean, my grandma Shirley crocheted an afghan in like the 1970s. And we have been using it in my house growing up until now. Like my parents still use it. My mom washes it, throws it in the dryer like nobody's business and uses it all the time, okay? And this was back when Red Heart was really scratchy and itchy, but it's so warm. Um, nowadays, it's soft. It's still very durable, but it's very, very soft. It's so like, it's a t completely different feel. It still doesn't have a lot of drape. It still comes in obnoxiously bright colors. Um, they don't even have dye lots. It's so overly dyed. I mean, um, it's just so funny. But this is just a great option for, for throw blankets, 
um, even like bed spreads. I'm making a, a bed spread, um, housewares, things like that. I wouldn't even use, I wouldn't use this for kitchen stuff. Stick to cotton. I have a cotton up there. But this is still amazing for um, housewares that won't be in the kitchen. And I'm just mentioning this now, even though we all heard of Red Heart Super Saver, but I'm not sure if everyone knew that they changed their fiber profile. Like, it's still 100% acrylic, but it's very, very, very soft now. Before, it was always itchy and a little scratchy and and um, very, very, very dense. They definitely made it a little more loftier. I'm noticing that when I knit with it, some colors like this orange tends to split. I don't know if you can see how it's it's pretty loosely plied. Um, I'm not sure if it's still going to be able to wear for, what is that, 1970s? 50 years, is that 50 years now? I'm not sure if it's gonna be able to stand up the test of time anymore because it seems to be a little looser in ply, but who knows, we're gonna find out. Um, and yeah, and if you wanna hear more about these mitered, 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 mitered. I just used a tutorial that Stacy from Very Pink Knits came up with. I absolutely love her. I've been used, I've been watching her videos for years since the day she started YouTube. I've been her biggest fan. I don't know if you know that. Hi, Stacy. Hi. Um, so I just use her tutorial like straight up and I just continue my stripes. I don't think she uses stripes all the way, but I did because I like stripes. I mean, look how obnoxiously bright this is. Oh. Originally, okay, for my crocheters that watch me, I know there's some of y'all, I crocheted quite a bit. Look at that. This took me like 25 hours to do. I kid you not. It'll be the entire day gone and went and I would only do like one portion because I am terrible at crochet. Grandma Shirley, do not come for me. Um, <laughs> but look at that. I was gonna... I might just use this as a wall hanging. I don't know what pattern this is. I think it's called Mandala. It was part of a mystery knit along and it was only shared via blog post. So I don't have a download for it. So if anyone recognizes this pattern, it's fairly popular on Ravelry. Please let me know because I wanna give this designer credit um, when I post this. So please let me know if you can name this pattern. It would help me so flipping much. But yeah, I started to crochet. This is all out of Red Heart Super Saver. I did not use the recommended yarn because I was too broke for it. Um, <laughs> she used like a fancy merino and it was like, oh, it was so nice. And I would love to knit a luxurious bedspread out of like merino and silk, but it's just not in my budget. I am a penny Pincher. I am Mr. Krabs from Spongebob. That is me. So yeah, that's my Red Heart Super Saver. And this has quite a bit of drape to it just because it's very, very loosely crocheted. I have a very loose crochet. As you can see, there's a gaping hole right there. Oh my gosh, Sophia, stop dangling that flammable acrylic over that candle. I might display this on my wall somewhere. I might tack it to a, um, to a canvas and use it as a beautiful wall hanging. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? So yeah, that was my first cheap yarn. It's Red Heart Super Saver. And yes, I've been knitting with it nonstop as I wait for some more yarn arrivals for some knit-alongs and patterns that you're gonna see from me very, very soon. Until then, I'm literally gonna be knitting a million miltered meters. Miter, you know what? Just return that English master's degree. Like, Miter! Oh no, I didn't turn on my mug warmer. Lame. Ah, it's lukewarm. The horror. So, let's dig into these yarns behind me. First things first, I'm gonna start with my hand spun. Okay, so hand spun can have a really expensive, I, I love when I do this to yarn. Okay, that's inappropriate. Anyway, <laughs> hand spun can have a really, really expensive overhead just because a lot of, I prefer, I personally prefer uh, spinning wheels. Um, so a spinning wheel can go from 500 to 12,000, okay? I mean. 1200 something like that 
So that's a ridiculously big overhead, large overhead. But if you just spin with a spindle, and I got my spindle, this one was like free. Actually, it wasn't free. The spindle was like $3. I got it from a secondhand craft shop that that no longer exists anymore. Um, talking about overhead prices. And um, this is like a few bucks. And with this, I was able to spin quite a bit of yarn. As you can see, I still got some that needs to be plied on here. And though it takes time, um, I found that buying roving is cheaper than buying yarn. Now, it depends on what type of roving you get. If you're getting a roving that was designed and hand carded and like hand handmade bats and things like that, you're going to pay a pretty penny because a wonderful skilled artist put it together. You know what I mean? Um, but if you get roving from a place like Nitpicks where it's all machine uh, made and uh, or if you get roving from a similar company like I get mine from a small business in New Jersey, it's like 10 bucks for four ounces. And this is what four ounces looks like. I was able to make a two ply yarn. I did add a little bit of fiber to make these little like puffy nubby parts, which may have been a bad idea. I do not know. But in all, this was, this is essentially $10 yarn and it's 100% merino wool. It's not super wash because I am terrible at spinning with super wash. Just that extra chemical coating, just, I just can't do it. I don't know, it drives me bonkers. But this yarn was 10 bucks, essentially. I Without calculating time, because time is money. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? But you know what I mean though? Like, I only paid 10 bucks. I had a great, I spent one evening knitting this while watching MTV Catfish reruns. And then um, I got a big sky in a merino out of it. So that's one way to do it on the cheap. Hand spinning is great. And um, I started off with Knit Picks roving. It's very inexpensive. I believe it's under $10 for one hank or what whatever you call it. And I actually knitted an entire cardigan using that. And this cardigan maybe cost me 20 bucks to knit. It's all 100% wool, okay? Um, and I'm gonna have to show you a picture of me wearing it. But it's 100% wool. It is, this would have cost me at least 100 and change to make this straight up um, from the yarn that I wanted. Um, but because I used roving and I took the time, it didn't take me that long. In fact, I started spinning this in the fall and I was done knitting it by like January. So, and so it didn't take me that long because I love spinning every day after work. I'd spin some and I'll knit some. So all in all, this was a really affordable knit and I still use wool, which I absolutely love wool. I love to smell it, as you know. And I also just love the natural properties that wool has. Um, so that's great. That if you have the ability to spin, if you wanna learn how to spin, um, you don't have to have a spinning wheel. In fact, a lot of people, I know a ton of people who actually spin just as fast on a spindle as they do on a wheel. So you can learn. I just, I just couldn't do it. Spindling just wasn't me. But I've heard from a lot of y'all that love it and use it just as well and just give it a try. It's a great way to save money on yarn. And I know some people are making spindles out of CDs and like wooden dowels. Like, you can pretty much make a spindle out of anything for like absolutely no money down. It's great. So my next yarn I'm gonna pull out, really good and expensive yarn that I've used is this, my Wool Ease by Lion Brand. This is not sponsored, even though they do send me yarn on occasion. I bought this one, look how raggedy it is because I've had it for years. I bought this one from my Artichoke French sweater. And um, what I love about wool ease in particular is that it is 20% wool, 80% acrylic. So it really does bring down the price quite a bit. And, but you still have enough wool in there so that way it blocks beautifully. It also can go in the washer and I believe the dryer too. Yep, it goes in washer and dryer, which makes it amazing. 
Um, it is a little scratchy because it's not merino, but it's not terribly scratchy. I've like, I've seen some yarns from um, Michaels and things like that, and that are wool, and it's just so itchy. It's just so itchy. I can't, I just can't do it. This one, however, I can't wear it next to skin. I do have eczema all over my back and arms, so I hold sweater in in wool. Um, just gives me the itchies anyway. But underneath, but with a shirt underneath it, it's perfectly fine. Um, and it wears really well. Now this comes in thick and it comes in regular. So this is the Wool Ease in medium, which is a four level four yarn, a uh, worsted weight. Um, I wish I had a price on it. I know it's inexpensive. I know it's like $5.99 or something like that for a skine. And the skines are pretty big. You get almost 200 yards. Now this comes in worsted and it comes in bulky. I mean super bulky. I think it used to come in chunky. I don't think it does anymore. But I, it's this is honestly one of my favorite yarns to get. And you could get it from anywhere. Um, Michaels. Um, AC Moore has it if you're if you're from the East Coast like I was. Joann's have it. You can get it online. It's amazing. And... I actually, that's the reason why I picked that yarn only in super bulky to make this cardigan right here. So I've noticed in the recent years, they've changed their formula just like Red Heart did um, on their yarns. And so this is actually much softer than the original uh, feel of it. Because I have some of this still like from years ago in a similar color and it's way itchier and scratchier. This, I just got this from them um, this fall and it's so much softer than this one. So I don't know if it's just the Thick and Quick change, but I do know that the Thick and Quick is way softer than the one I got from Joann's a few years back. And it's softer from the Thick and Quick I bought a few years back as well from Joann's. So in my opinion, I think they changed their profile and I wouldn't be surprised if they changed it on that as well. Now this I can wear close to skin. Um, let me just put it on and show you. Hold on. Got to put my knitting to the side. Make sure I don't burn it down. My candle is ablaze. Do you guys like my outfit? You probably can't really see much of it. It doesn't match. Okay, ready? Ugh. Hello? Okay. So, this is what it looks like. Oh, yes. This is a sneak peek. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. It's a sneak peek. Now, here are some pros and cons to this. Why are my sleeves so short? Why? Have to add to the sleeves. Anyway, um, pros and cons of this. Number one, um, pro. It's really, really soft, really affordable. I use about three balls of the big, big balls of this to make this, and I still have some left over. Cons is that it's starting to pill already, and I haven't worn it yet. And that's just because it is looser um, plied. Now, pilling to me is not a big deal because almost everything I've knitted from Affordable Yarn, uh, with the exception of a few acrylics I have on there and a few cottons I have on there, will pill uncontrollably um, the first few times you wear it. And then it'll stop. Yes, it stops. Um, so what I do is that after I wash my Affordable Hand Knits, like this is Wooly Stick and Quick, after I wash it, and I, I put this in the washer and dryer too, by the way, that's how I blocked it. Um, I'm just a little annoyed that my sleeves are a little short, but I kind of like it. So that way it's like watch length. Anyway, um, I blocked it as per usual. And then once you wash it and wear it and you get that pills, like I can imagine it'll start peeling underneath here you want to shave it with a shaver. Now, they have so many different shavers out there. Everyone has their preference. My preference is always the, uh, the battery powered ones, like a kind of like an electric shaver. I like those. And then once I shave that bad boy, shave it, and then the next time I wash it and wear it, it doesn't pill a single time again. It tends to just need that initial shedding time um, I don't know why. I, I know a few other knitters have experienced this as well. But, yeah, it just needs that initial time. And then after that, it might need to be depilled a few more wears down the line. Um, every so often, like every summer, I tend to go through my hand knits 
right before the season start to change and I launder them and I I will I'm getting out of breath I'm getting excited <sighs> I launder them and I depill them and things like that and I look through them so I do that every year as part of my routine anyway but usually after the first initial depilling it tends to just be fine for quite a bit and it'll wear like normal um, so that's one thing. If you notice pilling with your Woolies that can click now because of the change in the texture and the way it's being plied and things like that, it's a little loftier, don't fret. Just um, depill it, give it another wash when needed, and then you should notice a drastic change. And when I depill it, I really go in. Like, I am in there. I am shaving that thing. Like, I will, I will be there for, like, ever just to make sure it's pristine and perfect. Um, so FYI, you might have to put a little muscle into it. I'm still looking for the perfect depiller. Um, I got my, I got my old one from Knit Picks. It's somewhere in my mess, embarrassing, uh, craft cart. But my problem with that is that it gets stuck. It doesn't do a great job. Um, no tea, no shade Knit Picks. Their depiller just did not work for me. A lot of people loved it. It just wasn't for me. Maybe I just got a defected one. But there are great ones out there. I've used them growing up as a beginner fiber artist. They are out there. So just take a look. So that was my, that was another one. Um, yes, that is one of my patterns. I don't know if I mentioned that. That sweater I just had on was one of my patterns. And it will be released pretty soon. I don't know what this is. I'm just going to go with it. It's like waves. Okay, next. I'm sure you've noticed this already is my peaches and cream and it all comes tumbling down Whoop! good thing that didn't catch on fire i'm just gonna pick up one of them so that way i don't have that happen again okay <laughs> anyway over here i have my peaches and cream Lord, this is amazing i love this stuff this whole uh, cake thing is like eight bucks give or take, depending on where you live. And it serves multi-purpose. Flip it over, when you're done knitting a hat, block your hat, stick it on there, it's good to go. Okay, like for blocking. Um, if you don't wanna block it flat, like if you have to stretch it out, ow, don't do that. Anyway, <laughs> I also just use this to knit and crochet with, and this is my go-to when I wanna knit a bikini. Um, I haven't knitted a bikini in a very long time. It's been like forever. I don't even know where mine are. Like I used to crochet them way back when, when I was skinny. <laughs> when I was young and skinny. Um, but I still collect these. I always pick up cool colors when I see them. And this is what I was talking about before. This is what I go to for children wear and baby wear. I tend to always make hats and things out of out of cotton it's not super duper duper warm but that's okay because most babies um that i knit for tend to be tend to like not like be uh what's it called like when you commute only by car if you're not like walking out and about a lot in the cold you know what i mean so like essentially they, they just need it from the house to the garage you know what i mean like to school and back so i don't mind knitting warm things like hats and onesies and things like that out of cotton. Um, for onesies, I do prefer merino, but for hats and blankets and all the little cute little lovies, washcloths, always, 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 I always reach for my peaches and cream cotton. And this is honestly under 10 bucks. And what I absolutely love about it is its durability, its washability. You can do it in the washer and dryer and be done with it. You can wash it 10 ways till Sunday. There's very little bleeding, especially with these over dyed commercially uh, produced yarns. Even the Red Heart Super Saver, there's very little bleeding just because of the way it's dyed. Um, it's not like... It's not the softest cotton. Um, I've had softer, but it's really durable and it does the job. I would not use this for a sweater though, for an adult. It just doesn't have that drape. Your stitches can look a little wonky. 
if it's all stuck in it. You kind of have to pick the pattern that fits it. You know what I mean? Like this is great for garter. Um, this is also great for little hats to make little like rustic looking baby hats. I personally would not make a sweater for this for an adult. To me, it just look, looks a little more unfinished. On kids, it's flipping adorable. It's just one of those things. Um, I'm not gonna put that back up there because I don't want everything to come tumbling down and cause a fire. So another thing that I love, and for those of you who want to knit their baby stuff out of uh, wool, um, or who wants to knit something out of wool, I have a treat for you. It is Heritage Sock Yarn by Cascade Yarns. Um, is the price still on here? I love this yarn. It's It always runs about $10 to $12, so don't know what the price is. I bought it, but well, I don't know. It runs about $10 to $12. It is a super wash nylon mix, and I never use it for socks, ever. I love this for sweaters. I'll put a sweater I made out of this here. And what I love about this for sweaters is how soft it is next to skin. You can wear this next to skin. A lot of uh, um, affordable wools and merinos, even if it's merino, I still can't wear it close to skin. It's still really scratchy. This is honestly perfect. Perfect. Now, this is one of those yarns that I talked about before that do pill the first few times you wear them. But once you depill them, they're good to go. They are solid. Like this kind of looked like this after I finished knitting it. It had some pills, um, some loftiness happening, like too much of a loft. Give that thing a little, uh, okay, with a shaver and it is brilliant. Like I haven't gone back to my sweater that I just showed you with a shaver in years. Yeah, years. After that initial depilling, it was fine. Now there's some pilling now because it's been years, but it's not enough for me to pull out that shaver and spend an hour doing that. Like, <laughs> it's perfect. A perfect quality yarn to buy as a beginner who's delving into fingering sock weight yarns. Highly recommend it. Next time you're on a budget, and but you wanna make a sweater, I like, they're, they're like 10 to 12 bucks each. So the good thing about that is that if you catch it on sale, okay, you can make a sweater for well under 50 bucks, depending on your size and gauge and what have you. But me, I tend to only use like three to four of these for my sweaters. I am very petite, so uh, take that with a grain of salt, but I always have a ton of yarn left over afterwards to use for its intended purpose, which is socks. So yeah, this is fabulous. Fabulous. I love this yarn. Oh my gosh, Cascade, I love this. Thank you for making that. Next, I have, oh, please don't fall. I have my Patton's Croy Socks yarn. I sing this thing's praises all the time. Um, I absolutely love Patton Croy Sock yarn. Anyway, I love this yarn. Um, this is $6.50 per skein, so $6.50. You need two of these to make a pair of socks. One for baby socks, maybe kids socks if you're lucky. So what that comes out to be is like $13 socks straight up, which is comparable to what you buy in the store. And cheaper than buying wool socks in the store, which for those who knit, like that, that rarely comes out. Like it's rare when the cost of your materials, not including production costs, but the cost of your materials costs less than a finished mass produced item. And Patton's Croy does it. Okay. Um, and I absolutely love this. This is another soft weight yarn and you can find it everywhere. And it's like a treasure hunt. It is. Um, Oh my gosh, Knit More Girls, that's her name. Um, they uh, they always talk about this too, about how it's like when you go to certain stores for Patton's Croy, like each region has certain colors and they'll only carry like three colors. So it's like, it becomes like a treasure hunt. Like whenever you're in town, like a different town, it's like you gotta go to Michael's and see what type of Patton Croy they got. You know what I'm saying? And then like you, you, like you go back a few weeks later and they got completely different uh, profile, like color profiles. Like it's just like, it's like addicting. Almost every time I go to a craft store, I have to, 
have to see, have to see what type of Patton's Croy colorways they have. Of course, you could buy it online, but there's no fun in that. Like, where's the thrill of the hunt? Okay, I love the thrill of the hunt for this yarn. Um, it's very affordable, and on top of that, it never pills ever and it wears like a dream it washes like a dream they literally wear like iron um and they're very affordable they don't split it's perfect knitting for it's a perfect yarn for first time sock knitters and it's just such a powerhouse yarn i will knit an entire afghan out of this if i can if i had the time to do it i would do it in fact i'm saving all of my patent croy i scrapped to do that one day, eventually, because this would just make the most long wearing afghan ever. Oh, and it'll be 100% wool and washable. Actually, this is not 100% wool, I lied. It's 75% wool, 25% nylon, it has a very similar um, fiber content to the heritage sock I just showed you. And I just cannot, like, this is, this is everything. Like, I only have one skein to show you right now, or I have two of these in the same color because every time I buy them, I cast on the next day. Like, I will binge watch Netflix to finish my current sock project to start a new one just to try out a new color because it's also like a surprise. They don't tell you um, what the color is going to come out to be. Like, it'll say, oh, it's stripes, or this one just says jacquard, which I forget what that means, but it means some type of print. Um, but you don't know what it's going to look like until you're like halfway through your foot. So it's like a thrill. It's like, what's it going to be? Am I going to like it? Am I going to hate it? We don't know. And so that's what I absolutely love about this yarn. It's definitely a good time. So if you don't buy anything else from my list, Patton's Croix Sock Yarn, $6.50. Okay, you need two to make a pair of adult socks. Worth it. Jake? Yeah. You still here? Yeah. Let me know when you leave. Okay. okay. Anyway, my last two yarns I have to show you is a little bit controversial. 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 Oh, oh gosh, it's almost. Let's just move them over there. Oh, that's hot. Anyway, I have this yarn that is only available at Hobby Lobby. Now, Hobby Lobby, a lot of people will not shop there. If you mention it in some circles, you will get blacklisted. I am sorry, I still shop there um, just because of a budget thing, you know? Um, I don't have access to a lot of, like to Joann's anymore or AC more. Only thing I have access to is Michael's. And when things aren't on sale at Michael's, it is very, it's pricey. Michael's to me is just like really pricey. Am I the only one that sees that maybe? It's just, I don't know. Like this pillow was like 80 bucks at Michael's, but I got it for $3 or something like that. Something like that because it was a Christmas theme. And so it was at a season and it was like dirt cheap, but it was not dirt cheap at original price. It was like 80 bucks and this is only felt and I'm smelling it. It's not even wool felt. If it was wool felt, I would understand. It's not even handcrafted and it was like close to a hundred bucks. So yeah, that's at Michael's. That's not my price right not my price range at all. Um, and so I have to go to Hobby Lobby sometimes just because of the prices, you get everything on sale, they always have coupons, it's much easier for my finances. However, at the same time, I don't agree with their practices, I don't agree with how they treat their employees, I don't agree with some of the things that they invest their monies in, monies. <laughs> um, and that's just one of those things where it's kind of lame, you know, like, if you don't have a choice and you have to shop somewhere for something that you love to do, it's like, it's, it's very lame. I wish we had, um, I don't know, just more options or better business practices. I thought my husband was coming. But yeah, so that's just what I think about Hobby Lobby. I shop there because it's accessible for me for where I live. And until I get a Joann's, I will be in there all the time. But I love Joann's better anyway. Like Joann's is my favorite for yarn because they have so many options. It's just like an hour away from me. It is so sad.
But anyway, whatever. We're going to go on with the show. This is Yarn Bee Mimosa in the color gray. This is actually made out of the same yarn. I believe it's called Turquoise, this colorway right here. And it is... It is cotton and rayon, so I was right. It is a cotton blend. It's 62% cotton, 38% rayon, and it is machine washable. I do not think you could put it in the dryer. It has these funny little, it doesn't write it out. It just has like these funny little words on it. I don't think you could put it in the dryer. It has an X on it, so I don't think so. And what I love about this yarn is that it's, the only, it's very drapey. The rayon gives it a beautiful shine. It doesn't look too synthetic. Um, every time I wear this garment, I, everyone's always like, oh, and it's not just because of like the knitting. I mean, it's just the, the actual fabric. It's just really flattering to the body. Um, I just highly recommend checking this out. It's called Mimosa. It's yarn bee. It wears very well. I put it in the washer. I never put it in the dryer. I just lay it flat to dry or hang it up depending on what I feel like doing. And it just makes a wonderful garment. And because this is rayon, you cannot use this cotton blend in the kitchen. For kitchen stuff, stick to tried and true peaches and cream because it's 100% cotton. But because of the rayon, I can imagine that rayon would melt because it's synthetic. Um, so I would just stick to regular 100% cotton for pot warmers and bowl cozies and what have you. But this is wonderful for garments. And it is such a sleeper. No one makes anything out of this yarn. It's available everywhere. And can you focus? Hello? <gasps> focus. Anyway, it is available everywhere. And it's just like no one talks about it. It's Fabulous. I recommend you go out and you try it and you swatch it for yourself because it is glorious. Um, my last yarn is also from Hobby Lobby and it's a little bit of an upgrade from Red Heart Super Saver Acrylic. And it's fairly new to their stock comparing to their other yarns. It is called Soft and Sleek Low Pill Fiber Yarn and it is by their Yarn B brand. This is 100% acrylic, but you would never know it. It almost has a merino feel to it. Only if you know your fibers really well, it still has that acrylic squeakiness. That's what I call it, like a squeakiness. You know what I mean? You could definitely tell it. It's synthetic fiber. But, 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 it wears like a dream. It really does not pill at all. Like, it doesn't need that initial depilling like their other acrylics do. This is definitely a step up from acrylic, and this is the best acrylic I've ever seen touched in youth in my life, period. Now, it is a little pricier because of that. It, this was $3.99, which is still cheap. All right, well, that was all of my goodies I had to show you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Oh, remember I said acrylic is flammable. Yeah. All right. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.